Happy Sabbath. Yesterday was a preparation day. I was like, man, I'm excited. Tomorrow I'm singing for God. I'm sharing, you know. But Satan took my voice away. And I, I was like, man, what happened, you know. But I say this to myself, you know. It's not going to stop me from sharing. Because God gives me the experience not to keep it to myself, but to share. Amen. And I was at camp meeting uh, this weekend. But Brother Albert and Alberto and his wife was there, Sati was there, and many of you were there, and I shared this testimony. And I'm going to share it again because it is a beautiful, beautiful testimony that God has given me. And I just found out that, you know, asking for water is a really good way to start your conversation with someone and to connect with them, especially here in Arizona, because they can't deny you water. <laughs> you know, I just want to tell you this lady by the name of um, Emily, she rejected me twice through the screen door. And I was like, that's okay, I still have one more strike, you know. <laughs> I'm not gonna run away with it. So I was like, man, may I have some water? She's like, yes, of course. So she went to her garage in her refrigerator, get her water, bring it to me. I was like, man, thank you. I was like, man, I just can't leave, you know. I need to, I need to reach this woman. God, this thing. And I glanced up and there's a sign saying, mi casa en su casa. So I was like, ma'am, you speak Spanish? <laughs> She's like, Yes, what about you? I was like, well, I'm learning it as my fifth language. Just trying to get there. <laughs> She's like, good, good, good. So we just start talking. I found out that she was a Christian. So we just start sharing our belief. And then she was like, which school do you go to? I said, Thunderbird Academy. She's like, wow, I have friends who graduated from there. I was like, wow, that is awesome. Are you Adventist? She's like, no. But she started asking me all these questions about Adventism. Amen. And I simply told her, I was like, man, I can tell you the answers based on what I know. But that will not be the best answer. You can't just take all the answers from my word. Uh, you can't just take the words of mine for the answers. Study it out for yourself. I handed her the great controversy. All right. And then I tell her about it. And then I also handed her step to Christ. Tell her about it. And at the end, I give her the, the desire of ages. And she, this lady going from no, not interested, no soliciting. I don't have any money. I'm to getting those three books. Amen. And I, I praise the Lord. And before I leave, she's like, you were a blessing. You came to my door. I believe God sent you here. And she walked me to the, to, the, to the sidewalk. She's like, I wish I could go with you door to door. You know, what you're doing is amazing. But I don't have time. I was like, that's okay, man. She's like, I'm glad you asked for water. Because if you haven't, <laughs> it would not be the same. And that reminds me of Jesus and the woman at the well. On, uh, oh, it looks in, it's funny, John chapter 4. And if you look at verse... Verse 7, Jesus simply asked this woman for a drink. He said, give me a drink. And that's, that's right. how he started the conversation. And it was amazing because I could just imagine, you know, at the end of that conversation, that woman would look into the eyes of Jesus and say the same thing that Emily told me. I'm glad you asked for water because I'm complete now because you asked for water. And if you look at the same chapter, John 4, verse 13 and 14, Jesus also said that whosoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. And that is my prayer for each one of us today. That we may accept to receive that living water that Jesus is freely offering for us. God bless you guys and thank you very much for this opportunity. Who wants a sermon after that? <laughs> I told him I'm willing to skip it, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a joy to be with you. Fifty years ago, this gentleman and I stood, and here we stand again. God is merciful, gracious, not willing that any should perish, but that how many? Oh, I'm so glad he didn't leave anybody out. You know, I was raised a Roman Catholic, and I had good intentions of studying to be a priest. I was in a monastery. My uh, story appeared in the Review and Herald, from altar boy to Adventist minister. I'm so glad I'm Adventist minister. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I can never thank him enough. Now, I just thought, I remember going to church, in the Church of Rome, and um, having to go to a confession. Anybody's ever been to a confession here? 
You've been to a confession booth? And one problem I had with that, and you know, it's fine, but when at the end he would say, have you told me everything? Have you told me? And I said yes, and I knew I was lying. <laughs> I could never tell him everything. How do you tell everything to a human being? But aren't you glad we have a great high priest? We could come boldly, cast all our cares upon him. He cares. And, uh, and I'm so glad I attended a week of prayer. My dad sent me to this school, didn't know it was an Adventist school. He had no idea. I was sent there by mistake as far as he was concerned. Thank you, Jesus, for mistakes like that. Thank you, Jesus. We know that all things work together for good. To those who love Jesus. Nothing just happens to you. So the week of prayer there. And I remember the, the preacher used three words. I'm going to share those with you. Maybe somebody can help me with this. Uh, let's see. He said, I want you to know what Jesus can do for you. I never heard that before. Having attended a uh, monastery, where do you hear the word redemption? Where do you hear the word reconciliation? Propitiation. Remember, we're told here that um, Christ and him crucified should be the theme of our contemplation. The highest joy of our emotions. We should talk about it more and more. Who came from the highest form of existence. That of being God himself. To the lowest form of existence. That of a doulos. In the Greek that means a slave. Did it all for you and for me. Thank you Jesus. Thank you. But anyway. He talked about these three words. I want to. Um, now you, you've seen these words before. Redemption. Uh, what does that involve? Another word for redemption. In the original language. The Greek. Is ransom. You can use the word ransom. You know what the word ransom? Uh, to buy back, to recover, to set free by paying a ransom. Not long ago I heard about a young lady who was kidnapped by a, a group of people. And the, these fellows knew their dad, her daddy was a rich man. So they sent him a note. You come up with this ransom and you, we will see that your daughter gets back to you. And Arrangements were made. No police were allowed, you know, in this place. Anyway, he, he was willing to pay any price to get his daughter back. And that actually took place. That actually took place. A ransom. Well, um, when it came to ransom you and me, what did God do? He wouldn't send an angel. He could have sent an angel. He could have sent Gabriel. He could send many other things. But it wouldn't do. The only ransom that would be acceptable was the life of his son Jesus. Oh, how he loves you and me. Um, the second one, let's go to the text here. Uh, what do I have here? Yeah, propitiation. Is that what I have? Yeah, it's a big word. Just forget the word. Just remember, it simply means appeasement. Appeasement. And um, look at uh, 1 John 2, verse 2. For he is the propitiation or appeasement for our sins, not for ours only, but for how many? Sins of the whole world. So what is that word appeasement? Well, why would a God be appeased? 
I mean, he loves us. You see, my friend, God had a problem. When man sinned, when man was kidnapped by Satan, when man sinned, the law of God was broken. There was a problem in the way. He can't just say, just forget it, let's start all over again. The moral law of God was broken. And the only way, the only way to be justified, God be righteous and just, was to pay the full penalty. And that meant the life of Jesus, his own son. And he was willing to do that so that he can be the just and the justifier of those who come to him by faith. You and I are here because, my friend, of this beautiful act of God. The law was appeased. The law demands the wage of sin is what? Death. Death. The gift of God is eternal life through Christ our Lord. So the righteousness of God, the law, the justice of God remained intact. But it had to be a big, big price. What was that price? The life of his son Jesus. Not an angel. That was the only way to appease the broken law of God. Either throw the law out, God couldn't do that, or appeasement. Appeasement. And, and the third one, let's go over to... Um, um, Second Corinthians chapter five verse nineteen. Second Corinthians. Remember, we are we're told that we should be gathered around the cross. Christ and Him crucified should be the theme, the theme of our conversation, contemplation, our highest joy, highest emotions. So we look at this the picture. What happened in the cross? God had to take these three words to give you a full picture. What really happened? One word won't do. You have to have all three, redemption, propitiation, and then we have reconciliation. Reconciliation. Uh, when man sin, when we sin, we're alienated from God. We're alienated from God. Christ on the cross becomes the peace and the peacemaker. With one hand, he holds your hand. With the other hand, he holds God's hand. He brings us together. He's, he's the priest and the sacrifice for your sins and mine. That's why you see God says, let's gather around the cross. Christ and him crucified. And I'm so thankful, my friend, during that week of prayer, I began to realize all this. More than just going to a human priest, confessing your sins to another person who does the same thing as you do. How can he forgive my sins? He does, and I, I saw some of them doing some of the same things I was doing. How could I tell of my sins? I'm so glad one is the mediator between man and God. Who? The man Christ Jesus. From the highest form of existence to the lowest for you and for me. I say thank you, Jesus. Amen?